Oh, good, af good afternoon, everyone. I am Carl Bacolod, and together with me is Janmal Kapugos, Kent Quadra, Pauline Dimaranan, and Nicholo Gamal. We are going to discuss about heterogeneous and solid catalyzed reactions. So first is about the heterogene heterogeneous reactions. Next slide. So we have learned about the classification of reaction systems. For a short recap, a reaction is homogeneous if it takes place in one phase alone. Then a reaction is heterogeneous if it requires the presence of at least two phases to proceed at the rate that it does. So temperature, pressure, and composition are the controlling factors for homogeneous reactions. Ones that control the reaction speed the fact that most of the problems we've solved had rate equations with just a rate constant and a concentration or a pressure term as the only components. However, heat and mass transfer factors have recently been introduced for heterogeneous reactions. These terms have the greatest influence on the rate of reaction for the most fast reactions. As a result, we may anticipate that the rate equation for heterogeneous reactions will include both reaction kinetic factors and mass transfer terms. Next slide. The catalytic reaction, whose space is varied, defies the categorization by substances that neither function as reactants nor products. These foreign materials, called catalysts, do not necessarily need to be present in large amounts. Catalysts essentially serve as intermediaries, slowing down or speeding up the reaction process while, modi while modified rel relatively slowly, if at all. Table 1.1 shows the classification of chemical reactions according to our scheme with a few examples of typical reactions for each type. So focusing on heterogeneous reactions, next slide. Two complicating factors arise when dealing with these systems compared to homogeneous ones. First is the rate expression becomes more complex due to the presence of multiple phases, necessitating the consideration of material movement between phases. Second is two-phase system introduce complications in contacting patterns that must be considered. The rate expression for heterogeneous systems include mass transfer terms alongside the traditional chemical kinetics term. These mass transfer terms vary in type and number depending on the specific heterogeneous systems being studied, making a universal rate expression impractical. So since that homogeneous reactions are reactions that involve only one phase of matter, either a gaseous reaction where we solve for epsilon A or an aqueous reaction, where we can assume a constant density system. For heterogeneous reactions, more than one phase of matter is present. For example, the burning of coal in the presence of, of excess oxygen. So this is taken from the Vinspiel, and we are required here to get to tell how many rate steps are involved. Um we have forgot to write a, an equation here. So okay. So First, um, we see that two steps in series are involved, mass transfer of oxygen, of oxygen to the surface followed by reaction at the surface of the particle. So the reaction is written, for you guys, na klaro lang, makita lang guys. Yes. Sorry for my penmanship. Okay. Then, um, to get an overall rate expression, we will write the individual individual rate steps on the same basis, which is um like the unit surface of burning particle, unit volume of fermenter, unit volume of cells, and etc. So, um, we will get here the rate expressed as negative R A is equals to mole A reacted over volume of reacted volume of reactor fluid per times time, or negative Ra is equals to ball A reacted over mass of solid solid times time, and, or um, negative Ra is equals to mole A reacted over interfacial surface times time. So in here, um, um, I'll explain here that the 
mass transfer of oxygen to the surface, as you can see, the arrow is going to the surface of this um, matter. Then the followed by the reaction at the surface of the matter. So let's um, go back to the slideshow. Now, we put all the mass transfer and reaction steps into the same rate form and then combine. Thus, we will get um, mole A reacted over time is equals to negative RA times the volume is equals to negative R prime A times the so mass of solid and equals to negative R double prime A times the interfacial surface. And to put it in a simpler terms, we will get um R A is equals to um mass over volume times R prime A. R double prime A is equals to volume over interfacial surface. And R prime A is equals to interfacial surface over mass times the R double prime of A. Then if the steps are in series, just like the problem, um, we will get the overall rate equation. Our over, overall rate is equals to R1 is equals to R2 and is equals to R3. So we have here another example. Dilute air diffuses through a stagnant liquid film onto a plane surface consisting of B. And it reacts there to produce R, which diffuses back into the mainstream. So develop the overall rate expression for the following L over S reaction or liquid solid reaction. Next slide, please. All right, so we have here the solution of this problem. For So we got all the formulas from Levinspiel also. So by diffusion, the flux of A to the surface is written there, which is the rate of mass transfer in liquid film. And the reaction is first order with respect to A. So the, uh, based on unit surface, uh, we have there the rate of reaction at solid surface, which is negative R A2 is equal to KCAS. So at steady state, the flow rate to the surface is equal to the reaction rate at the surface. So that uh, gives us R A1 is equal to R A2. So from the two equations, uh, written above that, we'll be getting the we'll be getting the equations K L. I back back please. Okay, we'll be getting the equations K L times C A L minus C A S is equal to K C A S. Since uh, it's in a steady state, so they're equal, or you, you equate them. So K L C A L. Uh, so if we solve this equation with respect to CAS, it will come out as uh, CAS is equal to KL over K plus KL all multiplied to CAL. So CAS is the intermediate reaction. So you replace CAS by uh, its value to the previous equations and that results to our final answer which is KL over K, uh, KL times K over K plus KL multiplied to CAL. And uh, we will be obtaining overall resistance. We add that. And uh, the overall resistance is uh, only permissible when the rate is in linear function of driving force and when the processes occur in series. So hence, our um, final answer is K over L C A L. Next slide, please. So if it is non in a non-linear process, we repeat the process from the previous example with just one change. So we let the reaction step be in the second order with respect to A, and that gives us the negative R double prime A2 is equal to K neg uh, double, double prime C uh, AS squared. And now we calculate the value of CAS in the whole equation. 
and then we put it in a qu quadratic equation and get its positive root. After that, we substitute CAS to our previous equation, and then we get the overall rate expression. After getting the overall rate expression, we put it in a nonlinear equation, and we take 2K uh, double prime from the denominator, that's the common denominator, which gives us these, this overall rate equation. Next. Hello, hello. What are you on? Hello. Yes. So before we move on to the solid catalyzed reaction, we first we should first understand what a catalyst is. So catalysts are chemical substances that expedite a reaction by reducing the activation energy needed to reach the transition state. Unlike reactants, catalysts do not use up in the reaction, thus they remain unchanged after the process. This acceleration of reactions using catalysts is referred to as catalysis. So there are two types of, of catalysts. Next slide, please. So first is the homogeneous catalyst. Homogeneous catalysts are catalysts that exist in the in the same phase as the reaction mixture, commonly in the form of either a liquid or a gas. Heterogeneous catalysts are solid substances introduced into liquid or gas reaction mixture. These catalysts can be easily separated from the reaction mixture. Next, please. So the effect of catalysts on rate of reaction. First, we need to understand the collision theory of reaction rates and the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. First is the collision theory of reaction rates states that for a chemical reaction to occur, the reacting particles must collide with one another and the rate of reaction depends on the frequency of collision. So as you can see in the figure, for low concentrations, mass in the fact, so there are few collisions. For high concentration, on the other hand, mas gutok and more collisions ang katabo. Maxwell Boltzmann is, on the other hand, Maxwell Boltzmann is the probability distribution used to describe this part, this the particle speed. Next slide, please. So the importance of activation energy. Collisions only result in a reaction if particles collide with a certain minimum energy called the activation energy as mentioned before. And uh, the position of activation energy can be determined from or on Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. As you can see in the first image, the, the blue area represents the number of particles represented by the area under this part don't have enough activation energy. And so right side, only the particles, ang green, ang may enough energy to react. So for the next image or figure, nang nag-introduce the new activation energy and the particles na don't, na who don't have enough energy to react is nag-less because of the new activation energy introduced. Next, please. So adding a catalyst has this effect on activation energy. So a catalyst provides an alternative route, as you have seen, sa reaction with lower activation energy. This is illustrated in the following energy profile. So without a catalyst, mas taas ang potential energy niya. So mas less ang reaction and collisions. Introducing an, an alternative route, so ma, mas ang potential energy, mas malesen ang curve as you can see in the red line. So adding a catalyst hastens a reaction. 
Next, please. Next, please, Joel. Catalytic hydrogen in catalytic in catalytic hydrogen use reactions, the catalyst is solid. If we're going to categorize this, um, these specific reactions are called gas to solid reactions. And if we are going to remember or recall Mistashi's class in chemical process industries, one best example here is the here is the oxidation of, I mean the oxidation of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide using vanadium. You remember the V2O5. And therefore, this can also be called as the solid catalyzed reactions. So, they na di masulot ang solid catalyzed reactions. Okay, I will play the slideshow. Um, hello. Catalysts can significantly influence reaction rates either by accelerating reactions, positive catalysts, or slowing them down, which are, are called um, negative catalysts. There are two main types of catalysts, biochemical catalysts or enzymes operating at ambient temperatures and man-made catalysts used in high temperature reactions. Enzymes as biochemical catalysts are essential for life and play a vital role in various biological processes. Uh, while for man-made catalysts, typically solid materials, uh, it is employed in industrial processes like methanol, sulfuric acid, ammonia, petrochemical, polymer, paint, and plastic production. Over 50% of the chemical products produced today rely on the use of catalysts. Catalysts are crucial for selectiv selectively modifying specific reactions without affecting others, making them valuable for obtaining desired products from complex mixtures like petroleum. Uh, general observation, observations for our list. First is selecting a catalyst for a reaction often requires extensive trial and error due to limited understanding. Second, catalytic activity. Catalysts act by modifying reactant molecules near the surface with various series proposed to, ex to explain their action. Number four, catalysts lower the potential energy barrier for reactions according to the transi transition state theory. Number five, catalysts influence reaction rates but do not affect the equilib equilibrium or endpoint. Reaction with um, in the figure explains that I think it's also as uh, it was mentioned earlier um, by Jan Mel that uh, without catalyst, uh, may ara sang taas na um, potential energy. And number six, a desirable catalyst should have a large, easily accessible surface area to maximize catalytic activity. So we have here the performance equations. So let's start first with our, our plug flow reactor, which is uh, similar actually to those that we were, uh, we have discussed in the previ previous modules. So for reactors of homogeneous reactions, we have the tau is equal to V over VO, where V is the volume of our reactor. And for catalyst containing reactors, however, uh, Tau prime is equal to WCAO over FAO, 
which is equal to W over VO, where the W refers to the mass or uh, K, uh, in kg of the catalyst. So it can also be expressed in terms of the volume of solid, which is Vs. Next, please, next slide. And we also have the similar uh, performance equations of MFR for heterogeneous reactions. Next, please. So the heterogeneous catalyst is not equally distributed in the reactor and its fraction may vary according to the height. So here we have the U sub O, which denotes the superficial uh, gas velocity of the fluid, which is uh, the, uh, the fluid velocity if the solid catalyst is absent. So the heterogeneous catalyst is not equally uh, next next slide. Sorry, sorry. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So we are introduced with these types of reactors, the differential and integral reactors. So we have a differential flow reactor. When we choose to consider the rate to be constant at all points within the reactor. So, since the rates are concentration dependent, this assumption is usually reasonable only for small conversions or for shallow small reactors. So, when the variation in reaction rate with a reaction is large, then we choose to account for these variations in a method of analysis. And we, so we have an integral reactor. So, if the conversion is small, we can consider the differential flow reactor, and for the large or uh, large conversions, we have the integral uh, flow reactor for it. For the rest of the reactors, uh, recycle reactor, batch reactor, and MFR, uh, those are the similar performing uh, performance equations that we can derive from both heterogeneous and homogeneous reactions. Next slide, please. So before we go on with the uh, some of it, uh, the sample problems for our heterogeneous catalysis, uh, let us first uh, know its industrial applications. So the catalytic processes play a very vital role in the petrochemical industry, such as uh, fluid catalytic cracking, which is FCC, that is used to convert heavy hydrocarbons into lighter products like gasoline and olefins. So the hydrocarbons are mixed with a very fine catalyst powder. And these days, the catalysts are zeolites. These are more efficient than the older mixtures uh, of aluminum oxide and silicon dioxide. So the hydrocarbon molecules are broken up in a fairly random way to produce mixtures of smaller hydrocarbons, some of, some of which have carbon-carbon double bonds. So this is the only way in which this particular molecule might break up. So ethene and propene are important materials for making plastics and producing other organic chemicals and another product is octane which is also uh, which is found in petrol or gasoline next industrial application is the ammonia synthesis so the haber bosch process as we all know from our cpi for ammonia synthesis is also a classic example of the industrial heterogeneous catalytic reaction so nitrogen and hydrogen are converted into ammonia and we have the iron based catalyst over it at high temperature and pressure Next is the Fischer-Tropsch synthesis. So this is an exothermic catalytic process which converts syngas. Syngas is a mixture of carbon, monoxide, and hydrogen into a wide spectrum of liquid hydrocarbons and is used for synthetic fuel. So it, is, it has been one of the most important chemical processes in the chemical industry as well, as syngas can be obtained from coal, uh, coal, I mean, sorry, coal and uh natural gas and biomass, the establishment of designated syngas conversion routes might help us to develop an alternative energy-wise and carbon resource-wise industry to replace the current petroleum-based economy that we have. So varieties of transition metals have been employed for the syngas conversion, and it is known that uh, uh, iron, cobalt, and ruthenium co containing catalysts are the most efficient to catalyze syngas transformation to the desired liquid hydrocarbons. Next slide, please. 
So we will proceed to our sample problem. Uh, the catalytic reaction A uh, 4R is studied in a plug flow reactor using various amounts of catalyst and 20 liters per hour of pure A feed at 3.2 ATM and 117 degrees Celsius. The concentrations of A in the effluent stream is recorded for the various runs as follows. Find the rate equation for this reaction. And for our given, uh, the catalysts used in this uh, problem are 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.08, 0 0.16, and um, the concentration that CA, CA out 0 0.074, 0 0.060, and 0 0.044, 0 0.029. Next, we will proceed to the solution. Um, the given. R given is uh, for the initial volume, 20 liters per hour, and uh, initial pressure of A, 3.2 atm, and, and the temperature, which is converted to Kelvin, 390.15. So we, re we are required a uh, rate equation or uh, negative R, R A prime. So first, uh, because our uh, reaction is a gaseous reaction epsilon a is equal is not equals to zero so we will find epsilon a um, by um, substitu substituting uh, the pressure 3.2 and multiplying it by 4 uh, by the uh, coefficient and uh, adding 3.2 and all over 3.2 and we will get um, 3 for our epsilon a Next, uh, we will find uh, the uh, in initial con concentration assuming ideal behavior. Uh, we will uh, multiply, uh, I mean, we will substitute, substitute it uh, 3.2 ATM all over uh, universal gas constant, which is 0 0.082, 0 0.06 uh, liters ATM all over moles per Kelvin. Multiply it to 390.15 Kelvin, and we will get an initial concentration of 0 0.1 moles per liter. And um, we will find the uh, initial uh, feed. Uh, the formula is initial, initial volume times initial uh, concentration of A, which is 20 times 0 0.1, and we will get 2 moles per hour for our uh, initial feed. So by deriving for previous slide, please. So by deriving and linearizing the performance equation for plug flow reactions as shown in this slide, we will then be able to complete the values in the table, which can be found on the next slide. Chal. Okay, so by using the following formulas, we are able to complete the tables again and then Next is to calculate the value of the slope using linear reg regression for us to get the final rate equa equation, which is negative R prime sub A is equal to 96.8036 CA. Next. So for our sample problem number two for chapter 18, we use the same problem, but we we'll find for another required, which is the weight of the PFR and MFR to compare which of the reactor utilizes less catalyst. So first is, since the given is partial pressure, we will use it to find the fractional change or the epsilon A. 3.2 times 4 plus 3.2 over 3.2, which is 3. For the PF for solving the weight for of PFR, we use this formula and transposing the FAO on the right side and ch changing the negative RA to K prime CAO times the quantity one minus XA over one plus epsilon A XA and substituting it to the formula, we find the Weight of the PFR to be 139.0716 kilogram catalyst. Next slide, please. For the MFR, using the same process, 
we we calculated the weight of the MFR or the mixed flow reactor to be 228.0589 kilogram catalyst. So we conclude that similar to homogeneous reactions, the PFR utilizes less catalyst compared to MFR. That will be all next. Thank you. Supposed to be we have here our references. So I guess I haven't. Um, Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are going to discuss this afternoon chapters 19 and 20, the catalytic reactors, packed bed, and fluidized bed. I am Gio Alvarez, and my group mates are Aldrich O'Hero, Kent Dalida, Mazel Gumayan, Ivan Gustilo, and Pilar Ginetta Chilena. So the objectives of these topics are to define packed bed catalytic reactor. Second is determine different types of catalytic reactors. Third is define importance of cool shot cooling and rapid cooling. Fourth is define fluidized bed reactor. Fifth is to determine applications for packed and fluidized bed. Last but not the least is to, to answer sample problems. Next slide, please. A packed bed catalytic reactor is a type of reactor used in the chemical industry for various catalytic reactions. It consists of cylindrical vessel filled with catalyst particles through which the reactants flow. The reactants get absorbed in the catalyst surface and the reaction takes place on the surface. The product then desorbs from the catalyst and leaves the reactor. The packed bed catalytic reactor's reaction rate depends on the mass transfer heat transfer, and reaction kinetics. Design considerations include catalyst and fluid properties, reactor size, temperature, pressure, and flow rate. Next slide, please. So example of a pack bed featured in Levenspiel is the adiabatic pack bed reactor. So this reactor is divided into multiple stages and it operates adiabatically. So the goal of using this reactor is to design a system that maximizes the yield of the desired product while minimizing unwanted side reaction. Following this, we also have stage packed bed with intercooling where coolant is applied at specific points within the reactor to manage um, temperature rise resulting from exothermic reactions. Then we have stage mixed flow reactors in which reactants um, pass through different zones with distinct properties to optimize reaction conditions. Then we also have stage packed beds with recycle so that so the catalyst bed in this reactor is divided into multiple stages with recycle streams, allowing an increased conversion in specific zones by reintroducing unreacted material from the effluent back into the reactor. Next slide, please. From Levenspiel, various catalytic reactors were divided into two types, the fixed bed and fluidized bed. I'll be talking about fixed bed. In figure A, in figure A of the slide, it is the typical pack bed reactor, wherein reactant passes through the fixed bed in a well-designed pack bed reactor. The gas flows approximates plug flow. Plug flow means that all gas elements travel at the same velocity along the reactor's length, resulting in even and uniform contact with a solid catalyst. This, pl this plug flow behavior allows for efficient use of the, of the catalyst and facilitates high gas conversion rates. In figure B, it shows how the problem of hot spots can be substantially reduced from increasing the cooling of surface wherein cold fluid is injected in order to control the temperature, which will be explained late, later on. And lastly, in figure C, it shows how intercooling can still further control the temperature. Next slide. So we have, 
In this slide, we have cold shot cooling and rapid cooling. The significance of cold shot cooling lies in its ability to control the reaction rate and prevent unwanted side reactions or product degradation. Rapid cooling is important in packed bed catalytic reactors for maintaining temperature control, protecting catalyst, improving selectivity and yield, suppressing side reactions, and enhancing energy efficiency in chemical processes. Next slide. Next, we'll discuss the definition of fluidized bed reactor. So it is a type of chemical reactor that uses a bed of solid particles suspended and mixed by an upward flow of fluid, usually gas, to facilitate a chemical reaction. The fluidization of the bed of solids enhances heat and mass transfer, providing an efficient way of carrying out various chemical reactions such as catalytic cracking, combustion, and gasification. So fluidized bed reactor has advantages and disadvantages. Its advantages, it facilitates effective catalyst circulation, continuous operation, and controlled temperature conditions, and it ensures efficient and uniform contact between reactants and catalysts. Its disadvantage, the flow of gas and solid particles in a fluidized bed can be quite complex and not well understood, and fines can be carried away with a gas stream potentially causing issues downstream and reducing the effectiveness of the catalyst. So as mentioned by Ivan a while ago, another type of catalytic reactor is the fluidized bed reactors. So in figure C, it shows a fluidized reactor for a stable catalyst, which need not be um, regenerated. So the heat exchanger tubes are immersed in the bed to remove or add heat and to control the temperature. In figure E, it shows operations with the activating catalyst, which must be continually removed and regenerated. In figure F, it shows a three-stage countercurrent unit, which is designed to overcome the shortcomings of, flu of fluidized beds with regard to poor contacting. Next. Bubbling fluidized bed. Reactors use gas to pass through fine particle beds, creating a boiling liquid-like appearance with wrapping rising bubbles. Bubbling fluidized bed, there are models used to predict these behaviors, and the, and the following are dispersion and tank in series models, RTD or residence time distribution models, contact time distribution models, two region models, and hydrodynamic flow models. Queen Levin spill method, uh, it is a simplified hydrodynamic flow model for gas solid fluidization of PFB. Assumptions and as simplifications made in the KLBFB model are bubbles are, are all spherical, all the same size, and follow the Davidson model. Emulsion stays at minimum fluidization, relative gas solid velocity stays constant, and each bubble drags away of solid behind it, which generates a circulation of solid in the bed. Next slide, please. And this is the model and symbol used to describe the KL bubbling gas fluidized bed. Next slide. Now let us discuss the types of um, uh, fluidized bed. Now, the first two, the fixed bed and the bubbling fluidized bed, have no through flow of solids. So if a fluid is passed upward through a bed of fine particles, the fluid merely percolates through the void spaces between stationary particles. This is called a fixed bed. Generally, gas solid systems behave quite differently, with an increase in flow rate beyond minimum fluidization Large instabilities with bubbling and channeling of gas are, are observed. At higher flow rates, agitation becomes more violent and the movement of solids becomes more vigorous. In addition, the bed does not expa expand much beyond its volume at minimum fluidization. Such a bed is called an aggregative fluidized bed or a bubbling fluidized bed. The last three shows through flow shows through flow of solids leading to circulating fluidized beds. 
When fine particles are fluidized at a sufficiently high gas flow rate, the terminal velocity of the solids is exceeded. The upper surface of the bed disappears, enchainment becomes appreciable, and instead of bubbles, one observes a turbulent motion of solid clusters and voids of gas of various sizes and shapes. And that is called the turbulent fluidized bed. On the other hand, if the rate of enchainment is far larger, which usually necessitates the use of big cyclone collectors outside the bed, this system is called the fast fluidized bed. Lastly, with a further increase in gas velocity, solids are carried out of the bed with the gas. In this state, we have a dispersed, dilute, or lean phase fluidized bed with pneumatic transport of the solid. Now for the industrial apl applications of packed bed and fluidized bed. They are used in chemical synthesis, catalytic reforming, biological applications, adsorption processes, wastewater treatment, and hydrocracking. In a packed bed reactor, solid catalyst particles are placed in a column and reactants are passed through the bed. The catalyst facilitates the desired chemical reactions, leading to the formation of the desired product. In a fluidized bed reactor, the catalyst particles are suspended by the upward flow of reactants, allowing for efficient mixing and high surface area contact. That's for the chemical synthesis. In catalytic reforming, packed bed reactors or fluidized bed reactors with appropriate catalysts are employed to promote the desired reactions such as dehydrogenation, dehydrocyclization, and isomerization of hydrocarbons, leading to the production of high-quality gasoline. In biological applications, both are commonly used in bioreactors. They provide suitable environment for the growth and metabolic activities of microorganisms or cells. For adsorption processes, packed bed reactors with adsorbent particles are utilized for this purpose. As the fluid passes through the bed, the impurities are selectively adsorbed onto the solid particles, resulting in pur purified effluent. Similarly, fluidized bed reactors can be employed for adsorption processes where adsorbent particles are fluidized, providing better contact and efficiency. In wastewater treatment, these reactors can be used for adsorption of pollutants for catalytic reactions to remove specific contaminants from the wastewater. For hydrocracking, the catalyst promotes the cracking of large hydrocarbon molecules under high temperature and pressure, leading to the production of lighter hydrocarbons. So we proceed with the sample problem. We have here reactant gas U sub O is equal to 0 0.3 meters per second and V sub O is equal to 0 0.3 by meters meter cube per second passes upward to, through a two meter diameter fluidized bed u sub mf is equal to 0 0.03 meters per second e sub mf is equal to 0.5 containing seven tons of catalyst reaction proceeds as follows so we have here our required on below calculate the conversion of the reactant Find the proper mean concentration of A seen by the solids. And last, if gas were made to flow downward through the solids, we would have a packed bed. Assuming plug, plug flow gas, find, assuming plug flow of gas, find the conversion of reactant for this situation. So we have here our variables and formulas. Let U sub O equals to superficial gas velocity in the bed, D for diameter in meters, and E fraction of voids in bed. Next slide. Also, addi additional data, we have CAO is equals to 100 mole per cubic meter. D is equals to 20 times 10 raised to negative 6 squared meter second uh, squared meter per second alpha is equal to 0.33 and estimated size bubble size in the bed which is 0.32 meters and we have here our figure below which represents the systems next slide 
um, here are the following for pre-made formulas that we will be used in solving the problem, which is uh, equation 10, which is the rise velocity of a single bubble in a bed otherwise at UMF. Uh, G is, a, is the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, the equation 11 is rise velocity bubbles in a bubbling bed. And equation 12, uh, 12 is bed fraction in bubbles, which is represented there. Um, big B theory for cloud emotion diffusion in the, uh, the interchange of gas between bubble and cloud is then found to be the formula of KBC in equation 13. Next slide, please. And between the cloud wake and emotion, we have the equation 14, which is the KCE, internal change volume over the volume of bubble. Um, equation 15, which is the rough estimate of from experiment. Ex equation 16, which is the volumes of solid in cloud and wake over volume of bed. And equation 17, volume of solids in the rest of the emotion over the volume of bed. Equation 18 and equation 19. So these are some of the useful relationships solved for height, which was labeled as equation 20 uh, to solve for C, C A hat. Um, that's equation 21 and equation 22 is to solve for L and C A O over C A P. Next slide, please. Um, by simply plugging in all the values from equation 10 and 11, we can determine the rise velocity of bubbles. So UBR is equal to 1.26 meters per second, and UB is equal to 1.53 meters per second. Next is to check for slugging. The bubble size of 32 centimeters is small compared to the bed size of 200 centimeters. Hence, there is no slugging. So what is slugging? Uh, slugging refers to the formation of gas liquid slugs or bubbles within the reactor bed. It occurs due to imbalances in gas and liquid flow rates causing irregular flow patterns. Next is to check for fast bubbles assumption um, by simply plugging in from the formula of UB over UF. However, UF is equal to UMF over epsilon MF. And we got the value of 25.5. Since the bubble rises 25 times as fast as the emulsion gas, we have a fast bubble within thin cloud less than 1 cm thick. Therefore, bubbling model can be used in this equation. So this is the bubbling bed model equation to calculate for XA. LN CAO over CA is equal to K triple prime and times tau triple prime. So our first goal is to calculate all of the unknowns, which are the delta, the interchange of gas, which are KBC and KCE, the ratio of volume of solids BCE over volume of bed, which are FB, FC, FE, the F total, and the height of bubbly fluidized bed, so we can substitute all the values and calculate for CA, XA. So first, let's determine the bed fraction. First, we, we solve the delta from equation 12, which is equal to 0 0.196. Then from equation 20, we can solve for our bed fraction, which is equal to 0 0.6. Next, let's determine the interchange of gas from equation 13. KBC is, will equate to 0 0.614 per second. And from equation 14, KCE is equal to 0 0.133 per second. Now, we are going to determine the ratio of volume of solids of B, C, and E per volume of bed. Now, from equation 15, our FB is between 0 0.001 and 0 0.01. So, Levenspiel chose it to be 0 0.001. And from equation 16, plug in the given values, and our FC is 0 0.047. And from equation 17, 
the value of our Fe is 0 0.352. Then we have to determine the total ratio of volume of solids. We just add all these three values and equate to 1 minus epsilon F. So that would be 1 minus epsilon F equal 0 0.4, and that would be our F total. Next is to determine the height of the bubbling fluidized bed. Now from equation 10, plug in long the values of, of the given values from the problem and we get the height of the bubbling fluidized bed to be 2.785 meters. Now we can now calculate for the XA. Just insert the solved values from the previous slides to this formula. And we can now get the value of our LNCAO over CA to be 0 0.385. To calculate for XA, we have a formula LNCAO over CA equals LNCAO over CAO times 1 minus XA equals 0 0.385. Solving we get the conversion to be 0 0.32. And then to solve for CA, we just have to substitute the given initial concentration, 100 mole per cubic meter, to this formula, CAO times 1 minus XA, and our CA is 68 mole per cubic meters. Next, we are required to solve for the concentration seen by the solid. So from equation 21, we can directly solve for the concentration. Then our C sub A is equal to 11 mole per cubic meter. Then lastly, to solve for conversion of the packed bed reactor in a plug flow using equation 22 and equating C sub A as CAO times 1 minus XA, we have 0 0.95. Next slide, please. Or a 95% conversion using packed bed reactor. So the conversion in the fluidized bed is significantly lower than in the packed bed. Next. Next, our some sample problem two, the elementary isomerization A to B is carried out at 20 ATM in a fluidized CSTR containing 100 kg of catalyst where 50% conversion is achieved. It is proposed to replace the, the CSTR with packed bed reactor. The entering pressure was 20 ATM and the exit pressure was found to be 10 ATM. For A, what would be the conversion if no pressure drop? And for B, what will be the conversion in the new BPR with pressure drop? So this is the illustration of the give, given problem where our required is the X, the conversion with no pressure drop, and the conversion in new PBR with pressure drop. Now for, now for CSTR, we have an equation of W over FAO equals XA over negative RA, where W is the mass of the catalyst. And we have our rate law to be negative RA equals KCA. Now, we're going to change negative RA to KCAO times 1 minus XA. And transmuting the FAO and the KCAO to the left side, we get our equation 1 to be 100 over 1 minus 0 0.5 over 0 0.5 equals 100 kilograms. And that would be our equation 1. Now, for PFR, we have an equation of BXA over DW, then change negative RA to KCAO times 1 minus XA times Y over FAO. Now, you may be wondering what Anonisha of Y. Y is the mole fraction where it is just equal to the exit pressure over inlet pressure. So since there is no uh, pressure drop yet, Y is just equal to 1. Then integrating both sides, we get our equation 2 to be ln1 over 1 minus xa equals kcao over fao times w. Now substituting our equation 1 to equation 2, we get the value of, uh, we get the conversion and the no pressure drop, which is 0 0.63 or 63%.
uh, for cal- calculating, cal- calculating the letter B, which as uh, with PBR and pressure, with new PBR, with pressure drop, uh, we will know that Y is equals to one half. And we have a prenate formula for Y, which is a effective. And the A alpha there stands for the effectiveness factor of the modulus. And substituting the Y, we will get the alpha, which is 0. 0.0075 to the power of negative 1, or 1 over 0. 0.0075. Since W over FAO is equals to XA over the rate, the rate um, by integrating, we will get the equation of DXA over DW is equals to KCA over FAO. Next page. Since we know that P is temperature is constant, uh, Y is equals to P over PO. And, and since it is elementary, EA is equals to zero. Um, by using the formula CA is equals to CAO, one minus XA with Y to indicate the pressure drop, we will get the equation four. By, substitu- by substituting equation four to three um, and integrating it, we will get the we will get the ln of one of one over one minus x a is equals to kcao over fao uh, multiplied by two over three a multiply one uh, minus one minus a w to the power of a over two. And we know that. Y is equals to the following formula. And by substituting it and manipulating, we will get Y squared is equals to 1 minus AW to the power of A house. And substituting it to the recent, recent formula, we will get the, we will get the following answer that the XA is equals to 0 0.5406. And the conversion of the actor with no pressure drop is larger than the one with pressure drop. So to sum up everything, packed bed is suitable for steady state operations and continuous process, while fluidized bed operates in the principle of fluidization. Packed bed reactants flow through a stationary bed of salt particles, while fluidized bed um, reactants pass upward through bed of solid particles. In packed bed, uh, the particles are fixed in place while in fluidized bed, solid particles behave like a fluid. Next slide, please. So this is our reference for our report and thank you so much for listening, that's all. Thank you, group two. Very well done.